Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media Trudor, welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Well, last time, we got a message about a little organisation called Cerberus, who are apparently causing a bit of trouble, so we should go sort that out, you know, get them out of the mission journal, because I'm sure after we're done with that, we're never going to be hearing about them again, because, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, this is truly one of the uh, oddest missions in Mass Effect 1, with the benefit of hindsight. Here we go, head over to the Voyager Cluster and investigate Cerberus, because apparently they're like a Black Ops Systems Alliance group who have gone rogue and are doing a super soldier project and mutations and monstrosities and diddly diddly dee. Basically, really, really bad people. They basically just show up in a series of side missions right now, but they're a much bigger deal in Mass Effect 2 and 3. So I'm kind of curious whether they might have adjusted any of the armor, voice lines, text, anything to, you know, square the circle a bit because there's definitely a bit of, uh, retconning going on with Cerberus here. Though before I forget, I did say I was going to come to Hades Gamma in the first place to check in on a survey team, so... Okay, can't remember what actually happened to them, so let's just check they're not, you know, dead or something. Though, honestly, they're probably dead. Most people are when you're told, hey, go and investigate a uh, old broken signal from a missing team. They're almost always dead at that point, yes. Oh, but then again, maybe we've got some exciting action here. We've got scavengers who have decided to declare war on me. I mean, I'm going to be honest, lads. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Okay, there's still one of them. Are you 100% sure this is what you want to do? I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance to not shoot me. All right, last chance. All right, you had your chance. And that's why you don't... Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. I've just decided she doesn't get to have, you know, a body anymore. Gotta love that. Just sometimes you'll run into trouble on planets. Marvelous. Also, I really hope that wasn't the survey team because... Oh, that was a handful of people who were, you know, around some form of artifact. And then I blew them up. And honestly, they didn't know I was there to check on them. I just showed up in a tank with a cannon on it. So, oh dear. Oh, this is going to take some explaining to Alliance headquarters. Oh, but hello, Saxe. Oh! Well, isn't this a fun bit of environmental storytelling? I'd forgotten about this. Yes, those scavengers have very deliberately set up a transmission tower to cause things to crash here so that they can scavenge them. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, and it's another bloody Thrashamore as well. I just can't stay away from these bastards. Right, I'm going to be honest. Not really here for you, but if you're going to be determined to attack me, I guess, you know, we're just going to have to take a couple of pot shots at you and then... Is that a good dodge? It wasn't a spectacular dodge, to be honest. And, oh, bloody hell. Fine, I'll take you out, you bastards. There we go. Nice and dead. Four grand. Some experience. Ship slightly on fire, but I'm sure it's fine. Now, what I was actually here for was... Yes, this nice little blibbly gibbet. Right here, whatever this is. Oh, nice and simple, too. Excellent. It's a Turin insignia. Probably from the period when they kicked our asses in a war. Okay, everybody just try and not breathe the smoke. I don't want to waste Omnigel fixing this place up, so I think we're almost uh, there, actually. Here we go. One lovely research base. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's also some stuff over there, and stuff over there means free money. I'm guessing, given there's... Hang on, is that a mine? So that's the entrance to a mine. I'm guessing I'm just about to find a note saying, hey, go into the mine. But... This place looks abandoned. Yes, Liara, an empty place does look abandoned. But there might be boxes. All right, we're here to loot. See? Look at that. Level 4 stuff. That's worth a few thousand credits. According to these data logs, the survey team unearthed some kind of alien technology. Could be answers at the excavation site. Oh, okay, right. Yes, I think I know what we're going into in that case. And you know what? I was lying to you last week. I'm sorry, I forgot about this. There are, in fact, four locations you can stumble across. There's the spaceship, which is in space. But on planets, it's not just the warehouse or the bunker. There is also the mine, all right? There's only one location in space, three down on the ground. And we're about to see one of the ones we haven't seen yet. So, every mine's basically the same. You start by going down, because, you know, it's a mine. Then, you've got yourself 
this room right here. You take a left turn, because you always take a left turn. You open this door. You go down a bit more. Then you've got a big open room with a bunch of boxes in it. And then up to, yes, two distinct little patterns uh, around the far side. Now, we've got, uh, yes, a whole bunch of enemies right here. Now, this here... This is good news. You know why this is good news? Because a large number of weak enemies is just... That's just Liara Central right there. All right. Liara loves this stuff. So just go and... Oh, my goodness. Look at all of this. This is... Okay. Uh, how about grenade about now? Yes. Grenade. Another grenade. This is looking pretty good, actually. Now, uh, fall back. Because these guys don't really have range. But they do have... Okay, we're going to be needing a bit more than that. Throw! Okay, that's a couple of them on the way past. This is... Okay, uh, maybe, maybe more grenades. Actually, uh, guys, there's a husk and he's trying to go pop. Okay, that one's already gone pop. I think we've actually broken the backs of them. And yeah, if they get knocked onto the top of, uh, things, they can't get back down. Sometimes the physics goes a bit bananas. No, no, no. Don't let him do a thing. He'll knack your shields. Uh, guys, I think you can now go forward, actually. Liara, maybe maybe not you first. Maybe send send Rex up front. All right, Rex is uh, Rex is fine. Okay, so yes, basically Liara was uh, hugely important there. Rex loses his shield, but honestly, it's fine. Whatever alien technology the survey team unearthed must have turned them into mindless fanatics, machine cultists. Whatever they found, it's long gone now. Rex, it's literally there. There's a large alien thing right here that looks... All right, fine. Whatever, Rex. It's okay. You're not supposed to be the archaeologist. But yes, this here... Oh, blimey. Hang on. Sorry. There's more of them around the back. Uh, well, that's absolutely fine. How about we just singularity all of them and then just start up uh, shooting, actually. That's all fine. And to be honest, now they're all close together. A big overload and a big throw. And oh, we kind of blew up some stuff that was right next to us, actually. But I'm sure it's all absolutely... Is there another... Oh, there's another group over there, actually. Um, this is not entirely what I was expecting. Please lift some of them up. Rex, I want you on the front line, actually. And remember, headshots, bonus damage. So just go for some of that. This pistol is really slow. This pistol is catastrophically slow, actually. And go for the heads. Down, down, and we've almost got him. Any more for any more? Rex, hit him with carnage. How did you miss that badly? And there's the survey team. Marvellous. So, yes, they've been converted into husks, just like on Eden Prime. Though, yes, though the game kind of vaguely implies, oh, yes, this must be like Geth technology. No, it's something... Much worse. Something much, much worse. It fits into the wider Reaper plot. But we'll be getting into all of that as time goes by. Still, that's all we need here. Back to the ship we go. Because I did say I wanted to, yes, go and take care of uh, Cerberus, which was... Oh, bloody hell, hang on. Where were they again? Voyager. Yes, I'd forgotten that. There we are, right next door. Perfect. We're just doing a little sweep of the very outskirts of the galaxy right now. So, over we go. Though, to be honest, yes, there might well be more stuff floating around as time goes by. That was often how uh, Mass Effect worked, by the way, which is, uh, as you kind of, you know, got more missions, uh, you'd often discover new subsystems. Sometimes you'd discover new entire systems like this, sometimes you'd discover little subsystems within existing areas. So, you know, it was worthwhile to pay attention. Now, Mass Effect 2 made a huge mistake here, to my mind, which is, uh, it gave you a percentage completion for each system and for the galaxy as a whole, which was on screen at all times. This was a mistake because it meant you knew you'd done everything, and when you hadn't done something, the game was like, well, you're only at 92%, so you better go back in and check, which to my mind took away the sense of exploring from the whole endeavour. So I think that was a bit of a mistake, really. I preferred it back in these days when you just had to go around, explore, figure out for yourself what was or wasn't there. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. Ooh, I suspect you know what this is as well. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware. 
and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can't affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answer the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. So, they want me to go to the moon and sort that out, because yes, it's literally on the moon. He didn't mention that, but it's on the moon. Okay, we'll get to that, but I've got more important things to do today, damn it. Alright, I know that sounds important, but in the long run, Cerberus is going to be a much bigger deal. Still, here we go. Been through. Only recently actually uh, surveyed any capacity. Not particularly interesting as far as anyone is concerned, but turns out there's something secret going on down on the surface. Some form of super soldier program as it turns out. And looks to me like we got ourselves not one, but three research facilities, so... Okay, whole bunch of Cerberus scum to clear out today. And straight away we got eyes on number one in the distance. So, alright, long range scan it. There's a good chance they've got... That might or might not be a cannon, I'm not sure. But you know what? Blasting it with a cannon, that's not gonna hurt. Ooh, I'm seeing what looks like... Okay, yes, that was a cannon. Because it was definitely trying to return fire at me. So... Okay, fair enough. They've got some defences in play. Just uh, be ready for them. I see you guys. Fortunately, you're firing the world's slowest rockets at me. And you've also set up your own defences, so they're blocking the rockets. So basically, well done, you cocky geniuses. So yeah, the little thing is very good at taking out the shields. Then just a little bit more firepower. She'll take you out. Marvellous. Oh, and perfect flipping timing. Welcome to the final interior environment we're going to be encountering. The bunker. Alright, everyone. Yeah, ready. Because... You also get creepy music in the bunker. For some reason, the bunker always has the creepy music, even if it's not actually that creepy. So, if I remember correctly, Cerberus has got, like, test labs. My brain is saying, you guys wait back over here, alright? I might be able to. Oh! Uh, okay. There is a Cerberus Commando right over there. Well, let's get his shield out the way as a starting point, because immunity doesn't affect that. Knock him off his feet. Then his shield is coming back, and for the time being... Okay, his immunity has worn off. Admittedly, oh, blimey. Okay, Liara. Gonna need a bit of time and a bit of cover, because, yes, they've got some uh, immunity on them, and now we just want to be taking them out, and, yeah, that's worn off. And now, yeah, they're down on the ground. Both dead. Good. Two dead straight away. What else do we have? Because I know I can open up this here station. And if we're lucky, how about we just... No. No, 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 no. Door. Close the door. Right. So now those bugs can just attack the Cerberus. There you go. You can see it going on down over there. I think those are like suicide bugs. They're like banelings. Are we good? Everybody happy? Not everybody's happy. I can still see red. All right, just Rally round. prepare everybody on me. Where are the rest of them? Oh, hello over there. Sorry, I thought you guys were all dead already. Uh, Liara, knock him off his feet straight into a wall. Oh, that's him dead straight away. Marvellous. There's also more over here. Research technician. Okay, I know what you're thinking. It feels a bit like I'm the bad guy if I'm shooting research technicians in the face. But I promise I'm not. These guys are definitely the bad guys. Alright, it, it's fine. And... Seriously, Rex, you keep bloody missing with your shotgun. This is not cool. One more around the corner over here. And... Ooh, a sniper. Okay, on insanity, do not mess with those guys. They are not nothing. Job done. 
Okay, when I say job done, obviously now we loot, because uh, diagnostic stations uh, can be very useful. Looks like Cerberus has other bases on this world, Shepard. Yes, I know, but I'm supposed to be... Rex, you are not a diagnostic station. Stop pretending to be a diagnostic station. And yes, in many bunkers, uh, this door opens and there might be a room on the left, room on the right, one, the other, sometimes both if you're very, very lucky indeed. Uh, but for the time being... Uh, Yes, I can't actually uh, access any stuff around here, which is a shame because we might have been able to get some good Phoenix armor. When I say good, good, but also horrendously ugly. So, you know what? Blessing in disguise. Also, I 100% have points to spend, so okay. Advanced damping, meaning enemies can be stunned, so it's a useful little, you know, just stun ability, but also kills biotics dead, which is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, alternatively, Advanced Immunity, Tactical Armor up to Master Shield Booster, a bit more damage. I'm going to hold my points just for a bit, because I've got something in mind we might want to do with them. As for Rex, let's just get in more and more uh, shotgun damage too. As for you, Liara, well, I think we know what's going on uh, here. Just basically max out all of her abilities. Uh, more radius, more duration, better and better and better. I will say, though, the boosters are a really bloody nice addition to the Mako. They just help it, you know, get over the sides of cliffs a bit easier. And driving the Mako straight up a sheer cliff, well, that was the entire point of the damn thing. So anything that makes that a little bit easier and faster, yeah, I'll take that, thanks. All right, we should be coming up on base number two. Those bastards see me straight away. They seem to be not doing a good job hitting me, though. Just knacker some shields. Seriously, the spread even on the Mako has been massively reduced. It's ridiculous. Okay, Cerberus base number two. Once again, a lot more empty than I might usually expect for a bunker. But what I think we'll do again is, uh, yes, try and just uh, release the locals uh, if we can. Because, oh, it's husks on this occasion. And also, yeah, I'm going to say we just get over here. Hit the station. Run! And turn her off. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Guys, stay where you are. Because now we're going to let our enemy's enemy become our friend. Not sure who's actually going to be the uh, the friend on this situation. But for the time being, yeah, they seem to be doing a good job just battering each other. Marvelous. Husks just taking on. No, not husks. Sorry. Thorian creepers. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Yes, Cerberus are playing with big toys. And by the way... Knock that guy over. Oh, ho, ho, that'll do the job. Yeah, Thorian Creepers aren't, uh, they aren't nothing. And now they're coming over here. So, good shot. Good shot. Well done, Rex. Any more for any more? Just once in the head. Lovely. There you go, Pop. There's definitely more, yeah. I think right now they're sort of, uh, yeah, just hanging back. So, you guys head over there. I'll head over. Oh, Cerberus Commando. Right, Liara. Lift him up if you'd be so kind. And now we'll just put a bit of uh, damage onto him. When he's ready, he can just drop to the floor. Seriously, he's just going to stay up there for cocking ages. And now he's dead. And you are... Excuse me. No, no, no. No science, please. No flipping science. So, just one sabotage. No guns for you in a second, Mr. Overheating Pistol. Lovely. And yeah, now he can't really use his... Uh, can't really use his gun. So that's a bit of... Oh, he's a biotic. No, not acceptable. Damping. Right, so now he can't do that either. There we go, nice and dead. Any more for any more? Yes, there's something going on here. One and one. How are my grenades doing, by the way? Actually, you know what, there's two of them. So that there, that's time for a... What did I just say? And there we go, lovely. So how about now we just put a nice little... Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that'll do the job. That's you dead. And then just, uh, this is a nice opportunity to line up some uh, headshots too. And he can't use his abilities until he's back upon his feet. So just keep knocking him over. Job done. Lovely. Still on this occasion, medical stations. Yes, these ones we can open. Spectacular. So if we're lucky, we might get something new for, uh, for Rex here. And uh, heavy armor human, light armor quarian. Yeah, these things are a good way of getting some uh, nice armor that otherwise you might not have access to. Because they just kind of spit out nothing but Phoenix armor, which is all absolutely fine. So I'm kind of hoping for, okay, more light human, another Unity amp. I think that's the exact one Liara's already got, actually. But we shall see. Because, yeah, there was more around the other side, too. So 
I mean, if nothing else, this is just free stuff I can sell down the line. And my first ever Omni tool upgrade. Lovely. So yeah, increase in tech cooldown. I can spam my overloads a bit more frequently. Very, very nice indeed. Liara, you could do with a new amp. So duration bonus versus cooldown bonus I've got. Wow, I've got four of these bastards. Honestly, duration bonuses are pretty good. So we will go over to that, yes. And honestly, Rex can just uh, have the same thing, even though for the most part, he doesn't really have uh, many abilities. Then again, because he's only really got throw that I'm going to be wanting to use, we'll give him that. Yes, this was another thing that kind of got retconned. So, Rex was a vanguard, meaning by definition of a vanguard, he has some light biotic powers in Mass Effect 1. They spent the rest of the franchise pretending that wasn't the case, because he never has powers again in 2 or 3, and indeed, like, no Krogan does. It's just not a Krogan thing. Krogans aren't biotics anymore, apparently. So, for whatever reason, they just sort of decided, no, actually, Rex doesn't have biotic powers. What are you talking about? Of course he never did. You never saw a thing. I had forgotten that, by the way, that yes, Cerberus are uh, gathering specimens from around the galaxy. Some specimens we haven't even encountered yet in the main story, so uh, I don't know what a Thorian Creeper is. No bloody clue, never heard of them. But yeah, they're going to be uh, important as time goes by. Oh, now this is fun. Final Cerberus base here, but next to it, an anomaly in the form of a massive Great Pyramid. Now, uh, this is a Prothean Pyramid, so okay, just... Uh, Climb to the top of that, because why wouldn't you go to the top and then extract something from a Prothean Pyramid right over here. Lovely. And we get ourselves a Prothean Data Disk. Now, I'm really hoping that something in this base is, like, connected to that. Because it would make sense that the base next to the pyramid might have something to do with the Protheans. I'm just not 100% sure what it might be. But I really hope that's the case. Also, I'm almost out of grenades. I've been a little bit grenade happy recently. So, okay, I need to find a whole bunch of boxes uh, to get some more grenades out of. Because you can just get more by doing a bit of the old uh, scavenging. Nothing yet, mind, and in we go. Flipping Rachni. All right, well, that's all absolutely fine. These guys are a bit on the uh, the tough side. And guys, I should have... Oh, I really should have told you to follow me, actually. Guys, 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 fall back. Fall back at guys. Over here, I want you to... Rex! Rex, what are you... Rex isn't really one for walking away from a fight. That's that's fair, I suppose. Oh, bloody hell. Yes, uh, say hello to physics in Mass Effect 1, which was hilarious. Right, down you go, buddy. Yeah. We've got... Well, there's one person right there. Liara, you can help with that. You just sort uh, him out. Lovely. And Rex, get out of the cocking way, buddy. Right, there we go. Knees down on the ground and also out of cover. So you won't really be able to get back in cover in time. If need be, uh, Rex, use your little flimsy throw just to keep him off his feet for a second. And Rex, what did I just say? So we've also got someone over. Oh, we got someone way over there. John, remember, you are a sniper. So how about you just occasionally... Yeah, that was a pretty good shot right over there. Rex, just um, go and do your own thing. It's fine. I'll take care of this lad. So as soon as he wants to uh, pop out, hang about. He's put up a shield. Uh, so I want to overload. Uh, and I just said overload. There we go. Oh, now he's popped out again. Boom. Okay, 30% bonus damage as well. My shield is uh, holding. At this point, we're just basically uh, charging straight at them. Good, good, good. One sniper. But he's in a bit of trouble, actually. Liara, singularity number two. And Liara, what did I just say? Well, you've got one of them at least. And yep, you got that one too. So go. That was right in the head right over there. And one flipping more. Hang on, we just need to get a warp on you. Make sure you don't heal. And he gets knocked over. Is he dead? I don't know, but he's kind of going wibbly whoop. Hang on, there's someone over there. That was a hit. Not a prop one, though. Yeah, he's got shield boost. They've got the same abilities as you, which is lovely. Liara, right into a cock and wall if you'd be so kind. And go. He's down. Lovely. Time to get Kahoku some payback. Not sure why you really care about Kahoku, but yes, Kahoku is here and is very sadly dead. And check for a pulse. Nothing there. So there we go. Ferocity of the creatures. There are no signs of trauma on the corpse. The needle marks suggest a different means of execution. So there we go. I've leveled up from that and Cerberus are a big enough threat that they are training and containing 
vicious, monstrous, extinct beast, the sort that, you know, threatened the galaxy, because that was Arachni, they once threatened the entirety of the cooking galaxy, and also, they're just feeding Alliance Systems Admirals to the Arachni for food. Okay, so this is a big deal. I want you to remember, if we ever take this here Shepard forward, Shepard knows this about Cerberus. Shepard has witnessed firsthand that this is how Cerberus operates. This is what they're about. Still, we apparently know where the main Cerberus facility is. So, okay, Neferon in Columbia in Voyager. And I'm pretty sure that's a brand new system that until we did this mission, we didn't have access to. Yep, this system down here, this just was not here until right now. So, brand new subsystem for me, which is good because that's also a whole bunch of extra planets I can survey for easy free money. I'll never say no to nice easy free money. Oh, and this here, this is the sort of planet where I'm extra glad to have the new little boosters just to give us that tiny, tiny bit of an oomph to go up, you know, basically sheer flipping cliffs if I want to uh, get some nice lovely materials up top. There we go. That's going to speed things up a bit. Love it. Still, this here, this is the sort of planet where you actually have to start thinking about, uh, yes, how to get around it. Use the map. Consider what's high ground, what's low ground. Is there an easy point to get up to the high? Because uh, there can be trouble potentially going up sheer cliffs, even if you're the goddamn Mako. By the way, there's just a Solarian here. So probably we should give him a scan. Because that's probably worth money, damn it. Here we go. Up top of the ridge, that gives us a nice long range shot at... Oh dear. Guys, 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 guys. Are you trying to defend the base by... Oh no. Oh lads. I'm really sorry about this. But you've made... You've made a horrible, horrible mistake. You can just keep going in that direction, by the way. Now where are the... Ah! You had a rocket launcher, man. Okay, there wasn't even automated defences here. Okay, well that's you nice and taken care of. So that's all absolutely lovely. Just uh, head in this direction. Very, very nice indeed. This apparently is uh, the main base. Because Cerberus hasn't really got uh, properly started yet, I suppose. Okay, lads. Expect trouble. Probably on this occasion, not so much in the sense of... Uh, yeah, a box of anything bit more of a maze. Oh! Snipers. Ready to go. Okay, they're aware of us. They're aware. That's fine. If they want to do long range, I can do long range. That's fine. Yeah, there we go. You don't like that, do ya? You're on the move. Some of them are on the move. For the time being, until they start swarming, I'm happy to engage in long range to long range. Use the radar. Keep your eyes open. And one of them's coming. There you go. One Cerberus Commando. Well, he's walking in this direction. So if we lift him, he'll just keep moving in this direction. And then if you shoot them, then he'll start going in that direction. One dead, no trouble. Because yes, when someone's been made light through biotics, then the physics of guns also affect them, which is it's just lovely. Rex, you go forward. Start drawing them out, please. Liara, you stay back here because you're a bit more flimsy. But Rex, if you want to get into cover... Yeah, there we go. He wants to get into cover. All right. Now, 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 now. Knock that lad over. Because right now he's, uh, yeah, in trouble. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a problem. Uh, hit him with warp. Let's get some actual damage on him over time. And that's one off. Then one bullet right up the arse. I need my shield boost, actually. That guy's running in. Liara, knock him in a wall. That does some... Um, well, not much, actually. There's a shield gone. Now just knock him down and yeah, physics. All right, flipping physics. Down he goes. I now need to recharge. Rex can just keep going all day, every day. He's happy just standing in the front line, being a badass. And uh... oh, now that's nice. That's a good little sniper right there. Liara, if you can take care of him, that'd be great. I'm worried about more of them. Liara, what are you doing over here? Did I say come over here? No. No, I did not. Instead, just use your powers where I say. Because, yes, you can sort of um, cast your friend's powers where you can see, even if that's not where they are, which is a little bit uh, weird, but whatever. Okay, we're making some good progress here. Just don't... Don't get overconfident. Is that a knee, by the way? No, that's the side of a box. That's fine. Are we in a good position? I don't see him. It worries me I don't see him. 
I'm just going to toss a sabotage. There we go. That brought him out. He didn't like that because that did some damage to him. Uh, Liara, lift him up. And then do we get a shot in? Only well, somewhere. That's what we just saw. Yeah, he's just floating up there. So that's fine. And don't know what he just did there, but it seems to have done the job. And we're... Oh, we're back up to six, uh, six grenades. Okay, I think we're safe for Liara to start coming forward. Rex, you get over to there, to be honest. Yeah, Rex, get on that corner and start taking some pot shots. That should mean, yeah, he's now going to draw some attention. And that's good. I want Rex to draw attention because, seriously, what's Rex going to do otherwise? And he's probably going to... No, you don't. He was trying to uh, shield boost there, but he's not going to. Who's left? Don't get cocky. Cerberus commandos are not nothing. When I say don't get cocky, I shouldn't get cocky. Rex can get cocky. Rex can get as cocky as he bloody well chooses. So there we go. That's you nice and dead. Might be another... Yeah, there's another sniper on the far side. He was trying to get a shot in. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. See? Oh! That's why you don't get cocky. Okay. Back to where we were. This time... Yes, be a little bit uh, careful. Rex is going to be sent forward again. Liara's going to stay at the back. We're just going to wait for a good shot at that sniper. There we go. I see you over there. That's some good damage. You're just a basic commando. How's Rex doing, by the way? He's not doing great, but he's activating his uh, special. No, you don't. Bloody hell. Liara! Me and you are kind of standing in the same spot right now. Let's get him nice and airborne. That's you done for, you stupid bastard. I'm overheating. Down to two. Rex has got that regen going on. you got to love that. Rex, just uh, head out that direction. Flush him out. Using Rex to flush out the enemy. Very good idea for the most part. Because, yeah, he's just going to get their attention. And I see you. Assassination. Prepare, and go! That didn't even take him out. I am amazed. Okay, I'm a little bit concerned about where we where we are right now. I'm just going to get back in case assassin. Oh, you're a sniper. That's fine. Bye, Liara. Liara, what did I just... Okay, I'll just shoot him in the head. That, that could work too. How about we just get over here? Who's left at this point? Honestly, Rex just... Get forward. Get over there. I just want my companions to rush forward. And what have we got left, buddy? All right. Just hit him with anything. To be honest, that's him down on the ground, which is going to limit his options. And okay. I think he wibble physics to death. Lovely. Right. That's the first room. But this bunker is more traditional. There's more. First, though, make sure we've got uh, everything. And double check your equipment. You never know when you've picked up something good because... Yeah, that's a lot of stuff, actually. Wow, that's high explosive sex. That's actually huge. 10% bonus damage with 50 centimeters radius. No, I think I'll take uh, a meter radius and 25 damage and 25% weapon force. Why, yes, that'll be the thing. Okay, my grenades are now unstoppable murder machines. All right, everybody on me. There could be more yet. And yep, room both sides. But no sign of... Enemies, which is unusual. Giant pile of lockers, though. I'll take all of that. Well, officially, this is where we're supposed to be going. So. All right. No sign of trouble at all. In which case, let's have a bit of a uh, Luke-see round here. I honestly can't remember how this quest uh, resolves itself. So this is going to be a surprise to me, too. And. Okay. We've copied a bunch of files. And as a result of that, the computer has shut down because it was trying to wipe itself. So, okay, we've got some stuff. We can hand straight over to uh, the Alliance. Spectacular. And as soon as we return to the ship... Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Greetings, Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information on Cerberus activities. Who are you and who do you represent? Who I am is inconsequential. Suffice to say, I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kohoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. 
Did you have anything to do with Admiral Kohoku ending up dead? We had no reason to harm him. He was going to provide us with information about Cerberus. Information that is now in your possession. You must have some connection to Cerberus. How else could you tell Kohoku where to find them? Information is our business, Commander. Through our contacts, we were able to determine that the Cerberus group was active in the Voyager cluster. Unfortunately, that was all we were able to find out. That is why we are so interested in acquiring copies of the files from you. So yes indeed, we have got the slightest hint that Cerberus is sort of a big deal, the Shadow Broker is sort of involved, but at some point, to some extent, I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone like, you know, confirm this or say it for absolute definite one way or the other, they definitely change their minds a little bit, because this whole business, no matter what you choose, whether you give the files to the Shadow Broker or the Alliance, that doesn't go anywhere, I'm not sure it ever has any consequence whatsoever to the Shadow Broker or the Alliance. And as for everything Shepard's just seen, long extinct monsters and brain controlled parasites and little explodey bugs and all of that, Shepard just sort of forgets about that. Shepard forgets about the death of Admiral Kohoku and the zombies and the Iron Fleet and all the rest of it. Shepard just sort of forgets about everything. Going into Mass Effect 2, Shepard has some really good selective amnesia when it comes to Cerberus and we're not 100% done with them either if I recall correctly. There's one other crucial detail that uh, really bloody matters that we'll be getting to down the line. But for the time being... Yes, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be a good boy scout and hand them over to the Alliance, because I didn't actually do this deal with you, so honestly, I'm not sure what contract law has to say about this, but I think I've got a good case on this one. These are classified Alliance files. I'm not handing them over to you. Be reasonable, Commander. Cerberus was operating outside Alliance jurisdiction. You don't owe them any loyalty. The Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive, but no secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us and you will be well compensated. Nope, not happening. Keeping them for me. My loyalty is to the Alliance, not the Shadow Broker. That is unfortunate, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. He says this. He won't. It won't make any difference or matter in any way whatsoever. This is also the point, by the way, when uh, money starts getting a bit silly in this game. You see, there's only so many shotguns and assault rifles you're ever going to need, especially if you yourself are not a shotgun or assault rifle user. And once you start getting to level 4, 5 and 6, well, yeah, the amount of money you can make off them is slightly bananas. So here we go. Got myself a rank 6 sniper rifle. It is worse than my sniper rifle in literally every way. So it's complete and total garbage and I don't need it in any capacity. But it's worth 12,000 credits. Ablative coating for 12% damage protection. I've just got two of them. Never going to use it. So that could be uh, 6,000 each. Absolutely spectacular. So then we've got some physics threshold. Potentially useful if I'm going up against a giant number of biotics. But... For the most part, not really going to be needing that whatsoever. Kinetic buff is fun, because yeah, cooldown reduction, that can be really useful. So, I might keep that to give one to Liara, say. But for the most part, well, I don't need two, do I? No, most definitely not. And in no time whatsoever, I've almost got 300,000 credits. Just from going around to a handful of planets. So, that's kind of the magic number when you're buying the Spectre gear. The basic level 7 Spectre gear and... That stuff is hardcore, but how about we check in with my two favourite people in the world, Garrus and Rex, because, as I say, they've got the best stories to tell. Commander, nice work out there. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. C-Sex handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. 
I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. Yes, we've also got Baby Garrus here, who's just a, um, a little bit too happy about the idea of ignoring the rules and doing a whole bunch of murder. So, we're gonna put him on the right path. As I say, there might be some wobbles on his journey, but in the end, me and him will be best friends. It'll be great. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Yes, it is one of the stupidest things Shepard says in the entire game. Unless we just assume he just doesn't know what the genophage is, which was, uh, yes, a uh, genetic sterility thing that was imposed on them by the Turians and the Salarians after the Krogan Rebellions. Yeah, humanity definitely doesn't have it anywhere near as bad. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave, hire ourselves out, and most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Oh, I feel bad speaking to, you know, Mass Effect 1 at Early Rex. He also goes on one hell of a journey, but, uh, yes, early game despondent Rex who's sort of uh, given up. It's a bit sad to see him now, but don't worry, he'll be a lot more cheerful by the end of all of this. It's going to be lovely. You know what, Rex gets to the point nice and fast. While I'm down here, hello, Ashley. Commander, you have a minute to talk. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. Alright. I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Now I know I've been mean to Ashley in the past, but I do at least acknowledge she does have a role in the story. What she effectively is, is the voice, the explanation, the rationale whether you actually, you know, would follow it yourself or not for the renegade options, which I kind of feel is necessary in this game. 
because it's very easy to go into it assuming, well, obviously, you know, Paragon, it's like Light Side, Night Side Republic, it's the good guys, I'll just go for that, diddly diddly d. Renegades are hard to sell, so Ashley is effectively the voice of Renegade trying to put a bit of flesh and rationale and logic on the bones of the Renegade options. I don't think successfully, because her logic, her way of viewing the universe doesn't appeal to me, it doesn't work for me, but I can at least acknowledge she does have a role in the story, and if you keep chatting to her, she will come around in time, and yes, you're not very keen on them, though, no, let's make her, let's make her say it, all right, if you're gonna say something, Ashley, say it out loud. They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies, at least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. And do I just want to yell at her? No, let's not yell at her. Let's be nice. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. How do you get from relying on ourselves to mistreating our allies? I don't mean we should mistreat them, Commander. I just think we should be prepared to go it without them. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. Okay, just... Quick bit of advice for Ashley here, if you have to ever begin a paragraph with it's not racism, not really, you've definitely strayed a bit off the path of good sense right there. So no, 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 but go on, let's get the story at least. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Oh no, 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 no. You're going in with tongues, Williams. And finally, very easy to miss, actually. Down over here, you've got yourself Tali, who... To my mind, doesn't have the most interesting story because, for the most part, all she's really doing is, um, yeah, just giving you some information about the Quarians, which you could just got out of the Codex. She doesn't really have uh, that much interesting to say in this game. She really comes into her own in the next game, but here, she's mostly just filling you in on uh, Quarian culture. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Oh, you know what I'm being mean. Her little, you know, bubbly enthusiasm is rather contagious. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, 
We leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. You see, this is why I love Mass Effect 1. Just how much thought goes into it. A lesser game would have just said, you know what, the Squarians, they do a pilgrimage, it's a rite of passage, you go out, find something valuable, bring it back, boom. But Mass Effect 1 bothers to explain why it makes it make sense it's not just hey here's a weird alien thing that's a bit different from humanity what a weird thing eh i bet we can get an interesting story out of this no it makes it make sense they say you know what we need to circulate to maintain genetic diversity yep makes perfect sense but that would mean you were bringing young people onto your ship without knowing much about them so the pilgrimage is a way of proving yourself worthy and it's just it makes a lot of sense i love how much thought goes into this game, and I feel like you didn't get this so much in Mass Effect 2 and 3, which was very happy to just kind of uh, hand wave the details. It wasn't so interested in getting into the nitty gritty, it was, uh, things were better back in these days, damn it. Still, as far as I can tell, that's pretty much all we're gonna get out of uh, anybody for the time being. Until we've done the next main mission, no one's gonna give us the next big stage of their story anyway. Alright, I need a bit more money, and there's one thing in the Voyager cluster we haven't been to, so, uh, Amazon. Now that rings a bell, so I'm pretty confident the moment I get there, someone's going to be like, Commander, we need you to go and fetch our smoothie maker, which we left in Amazon. It was all very tragic. Commander Shepard, something uncomfortable has just come up. In the first contact war, we fired a lot of espionage probes into Turian space. We just received a mission complete burst from one of them. What makes this uncomfortable? When these probes were launched, we didn't have any idea who we were fighting. We didn't want to risk aliens examining our technology. The probe has a demo nuke built in. A 20 kiloton tactical fusion warhead. About equal to the bomb dropped on Hiroshima back in the 20th. If somebody finds that probe, tampers with it. You don't need me to finish, Commander. I understand this must be handled. But I don't have anyone trained to deal with this sort of thing, sir. I know. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. These probes have been classified for 26 years. The Council will call fusion bomb booby traps dangerous and irresponsible. The Alliance would face censure if they find this probe. I'm asking you because the Normandy can get on site quickly and quietly. It's in the Voyager cluster. It's in the Voyager cluster? That's the opposite side of the Alliance from Turian space. How did it get there? I don't know. It's possible someone recovered it safely and brought it there. It's also possible it got very badly lost. It could have been wandering the relay network since the war. We'll get on it immediately, Admiral. And we'll be discreet. I appreciate that, Commander. Good luck. I just love the attention to detail in this game too, by the way, which is... Even things like the number of moons in the sky, the size of the star in the sky... It's all consistent with what's on the map. This planet is supposed to be very close by to the sun. It's the nearest planet. It's the one with the uh, shortest, closest orbit. So uh, look up in the sky. What do you see? A really massive ass sun because you're supposed to be close to it. It's just, it's just so damn good, this game. So we tracked down the source of the signal. Would you believe uh, the bomber happens to have crash landed in a mine, which doesn't seem suspicious at all, does it? Welcome back to, uh, The Mine, by the way. So, yep, down to the first little, uh, area here. Check for boxes. Take a left. Down to the main room. But if I recall correctly, this one is, uh, a little bit different. Which is, uh, yeah, no contacts whatsoever. Because, uh, things aren't exactly, uh, what they appear in here. This is one of the origin missions. Where every shepherd gets them... But depending on which origin you picked, it may have more or less significance to you. So had I gone for, I believe, the, what was it, uh, war hero origin, then the guy I'm about to speak to, I think I'd know him 
very well. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, no, he's just going to be like uh, some guy. So this mission can either be very personal or it could just be random. It could just be, you know, a random little side mission that doesn't really mean anything. For me, it's going to be random. But yeah, had you gone for War Hero, then what's about to happen would be a bit of a reunion. That was a detonator. Someone just screwed us. <coughs> Shepard, at last. Also, this guy's a Turian now. He was a human previously, because they kind of just forgot to give him the right model. But no, he's been made into a Turian, which he was always supposed to be. Marvelous. And yes, unfortunately, because I'm not a war hero, I've no bloody clue who this is. You have me at a disadvantage. My name is Ilanos Heliot. I doubt you know it. Who do you think runs the Terminus clan, Shepard, huh? Thousands of pirates, slavers, criminals of every stripe? In most criminal organizations, it's the one who's recognized as the most successful. That's correct. The one who kills the most men, seizes the most ships, pillages the most colonies. Three years ago, I was the strongest. I used my influence to assemble a fleet. We would drive your kind out of the verge. Which might have been relevant to me had I been there, but sorry I wasn't, so... Nice to meet you, I guess. You're the one behind the attack on Elysium. I was the motivator. The instigator. The one who promised glory and riches for sacking the largest human colony in the cluster. The one blamed when it failed. Failed! I was ruined when your kind held against the Blitz! What better way to recover my reputation? than by eliminating the first human spectre. Okay, it's a bit of a flimsy rationale. It would make a lot more sense if he was gaining, you know, revenge on the person who actually stopped him. But what can you do, eh? My crew will come for me. Oh, let them. We'll be ready. An Alliance warship would make a fine prize. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, the oars here are laced with heavy metals. I'm afraid your suit radios aren't powerful enough to transmit out. I mean, you gotta give him. This ambush has been well thought through. Good for him. We'll find a way out of here. <laughs> I rather doubt that. Goodbye, Shepard. What do we do now, Shepard? It's fine. Don't worry, I'll just kill him. We find a way out. Someone up there needs my boot up his ass. See if there's anything in here we can use. Right, time to manually disable the hard point. Though yes, if I wanted to, I could just spend some Omni Gel because back in these days, you can just slap Omni Gel on anything and it'll work. It's great. But instead, oh, well that's okay. Well that's not too bad actually. Just do that. Well there we go. Oh hang on, sorry, there's several. Sorry, didn't realise that. Well that's fine. There's going to be, you know, it can't be that bad. Straight over there. One more as well. Because yes, time freezes. Well, that was nice and easy. Okay, so I've disarmed the nuke. When I was saying to hack it, well, there's no one who could do that. Turns out I can, which I guess makes sense. I am sort of a uh, semi-techie, so that's all absolutely fine. And now we just sneak out the back way, because he didn't bother to uh, close the back way. Though after that, we've got a fight on our hands. A fight, however, which I'm very well qualified for, because I'm Captain Cocking Sniper Rifle. All right, and they've decided to be down over here. So, 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 so. How about we just kind of say, oh, there is actually a Krogan down there. Okay, how about we just shoot you, and then shoot you. Right, you're nice and dead. I mean, you guys give it your best shot. I mean, you know, I respect the hustle. Okay, maybe don't bother with him while he's using immunity. Just go for you, by the way, and just keep shooting him in the head. He's bloody immunity times two. Okay, your immunity is going to be off at the moment, and no, you don't. No, you don't. Assassination, please. And... Oh, that's enough to take out a cocky Krogan. Right, your immunity's worn off, too. Yeah, this range is not much they can do, because they don't have sniper rifles, and I do, so... Life is basically very, very nice right now. They do have the odd sniper, but not any more they don't, actually. So, oh, this is... This is nice. I've just got plenty of time to line up my headshot. He tried to go for his uh, shield boost right over there. And then we have got... What else is left, by the way? Handful of people left, but they've also left my, uh, my ship parked right over. Wait, hang on, how do I... Does anyone know how we get down without dying? That'd do. That looks like that'd do the job, and excuse me. 
Are you not dead? Because you really should be. He's trying to he's trying to heal up or whatever. I like how you can spot them using abilities because they reach for their Omni tool. That there, that's nice. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to make a sprint for my uh, my ship. This is nice, by the way, because you can do things like, you know, pop up barrier, activate immunity, and then just make a run for the tank because uh, life's a lot easier when you're in, you know, a tank. Because when you're in a tank, you can just do this. Oh dear, you appear to have exploded, you stupid bastard. That used to get you reduced XP. I think they've changed that now. So what we're going to do, just for maximum, uh, you know, offensiveness, is uh, we're going to ram this guy. Then we're going to park on top of him. Then we're going to hop out. And now we're going to shoot him. And life is going to be good. I'm just going to throw him into my tank. There we go. Lovely. Does anyone know which one Halley it was? I think he might have died previously. Okay, so that should be Voyager, Hades, and Artemis Tau cleared out. But seriously, there's there's so much bloody galaxy here. We've barely even scratched the surface. But, 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 I suspect if we head back to the Citadel now... No, seriously, why aren't you selling the Spectre gear? Because I'm a Spectre. Okay, I just searched this online. This is apparently a known bug. The Spectre gear just sort of appears the first time you speak to this guy, then just isn't there anymore. The most powerful gear in the game just sort of goes missing. This is an acknowledged bug. Oh, well, that's... Right, bloody hell, Bioware. That feels like one you ought to be fixing pretty urgently. Well, I'm not leaving till I've bought a new something for somebody. All right, all this bloody money is weighing me down. Oh, never mind. We've got something even better. We may not have Spectre gear, but we've got Conrad Werner. I've got an idea, and I wanted to run it by you. I've got a lot going on right now, but I can spare a moment. Great! This'll just take a minute. With so many human colonies being attacked, I'm not sure that one Spectre is enough. What if you signed me on as another Spectre? Sadly, there's no option to say yes. I'd love to say yes, but you just can't. Conrad, I don't think that's a good idea. But I'd make a great Spectre. I'd be right there with you, showing the Council what humanity is capable of. I know you're afraid to trust people after losing your team at Akuz, but I'd never let you down. Oh, bless you, Conrad. I love and hate you so much. What about your wife, Conrad? She trusts you too. Aren't you letting her down? What? I, I don't understand. You know what keeps me going out here? Knowing that people back home are keeping humanity strong. You... You're right. I just got so caught up in all of it. I wanted to help. I'll go home. Thanks for setting me straight. Commander Shepard has the patience of a cocky saint. Here we go, a grenade upgrade. Hardly uh, spectacular, but still bloody useful. Thank you very much, Morland's famous shop. Oh, and a flipping bargain, only 38,000 credits. Heavy armor for Rex. Let's finally get him out of his bloody mercenary one. Oh, now that's more like it. Yes, he's got a lovely grunt color scheme going on there. Oh, go on. I'll treat myself to a lovely new sniper rifle up in the financial district too. Just out of interest, is this, uh, yeah, single shot or burst? Single shot, lovely. And I have got plenty of bloody grenades too, so... Okay, we finally got some good armor for Rex. I have got the best sniper rifle I've ever had. And Liara is... Well, she's Liara. She doesn't need armor or weapons. She's got her brain and it's magnificent and casts magic spells. So I'd say we're in really bloody good shape. And that means I'd say that's enough for now, ladies and gentlemen. But next time, we're going back to the local cluster. We need to go to Earth, or to be precise, the moon. Because, yes, indeed, there's a rogue VI needs to be taken out. And uh, the reward for doing that is one of the most important in the game. So important, in fact... I'm currently floating 12 bloody points, okay? Because uh, there's about to be some very, uh, very interesting stuff to invest in. So, uh, okay, this is, uh, this is going to be flipping magnificent. We're going to the moon. Once we're done with the moon, we should probably get on with a bit of the main plot. Maybe Neveria, maybe Pharos. I haven't actually decided uh, which one I want to go to next. But going to the moon is uh, a big moment for your character, which is... Uh, just lovely. Also, I love that my armor has little blinky lights on it. Just let everybody know, hey, watch out, Commander Shepard coming through. Don't get in my way. I've got blinky lights on me. So, you know, if I'm walking down the side of the road at night, I don't get hit by a car. Because that'd be an embarrassing way to die. 
So, some very, very important stuff coming up next time. Hopefully, you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been Joel. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, wait, and flamethrower! 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 Okay, so this is... This is definitely morally questionable. The point where you start singing the flamethrower song, potentially, you've gone over the line.